I have a 1998 PJ that's got the 4 liter AX15 uh, running a Dana 30 and a 44 in the rear. Uh, it ran fine, the engine runs good, but when I did the 35s and all the modifications to it, uh, have no power going up the hills. So that I want more power. Uh, it's 45 up the pass, and uh, so I bought the 5.3, and we're going to be sticking it inside here. Um, I'm running 411 gears, and that should be pretty good on the highway after I get enough power to push it. Alright, this is a 5.3 out of a Tahoe. This will be the new power plant for the TJ. So I have my 5.3. Uh, I'm going to clean it all up and get all the grease off of it. Today I've stripped out all of the, uh, the power steering pump and the alternator motor mounts. Uh, I'm going to get this down to the bare minimum and uh, get it all cleaned and painted and uh, we'll get it ready to stick inside the Jeep. After taking this thing down, I pulled off the valve cover. Uh, this engine came from a junkyard, supposedly had about 240,000, but looking inside the, uh, inside the valve cover, uh, it's very clean, but it does have some miles on it. I'm gonna pull the pan and uh, just get a general condition. I'll probably pull a rod in the main and see what it looks like. Uh, if it looks this good through the rest of it, I'll just run this for now. And if it looks bad, I'll send it to rebuild. We're in the TJ. We're going to take it for a drive. There's a hill up here that uh, both my son and I, we can't get even up to highway speed by the top. So we're going to take this with the 4 liter, run it up as fast as we can up the hill, and then we're going to do the 5.3. We'll do the same thing to see how much increase we have. In a later uh, show, Joe's going to put a turbocharger on his, and we're going to do the same thing. And we'll see which one uh, we get the best power out of. We're going to do it side by side after we get them both done. We are coming up to the hill that, uh, believe it or not, it's not very steep, but it's a long enough draw that we have a hard time getting up to speed. Uh, I tend to drive a little more conservative, uh, but I'm going to push it a little more than I would and we're going to see how long it takes us to get up to 60 and here we go. spider trail cage for the roll bar. Now we're going to start disassembling this engine. I got the 4 liter sold and we'll be taking it out and then uh, I'll be taking off the whole front. I'm going to try to leave the fenders on, uh, put the LS in and uh, we're going to get started and here in the next few weeks should have some progress made. I've started the disassembly. I uh, got the battery out. Actually, I had dual batteries. I uh, got those out. The PCM, I don't know uh, exactly right yet if I have to use this along with 
the GM one or if I can delete this. Um, I'll have to do some more research on that. But uh, I'll be stripping this out, getting the engine out, all the engine wiring out. I'm going to use the factory wires back to the fuel pump and everything as much as I can. So I'm going to have to cut and splice the LS wiring into it. Um, so pretty much the 4 liter removal is the first thing we're going to do. So I'll be disassembling everything here and pulling the radiator. And uh, I will be taking the front grill off just to make the engine easier to come out. Today we uh, started stripping the Jeep, got all the all the wire bundles, the radiator, core support, everything out of the way, getting the transmission, uh, everything underneath undone, drive lines, and on Saturday we're going to yard the uh, engine transmission transfer case all out as one. And we'll set it down here, split it, and then hook five, three up to that, and try to get it back in on Saturday. Today, we got the engine transmission and the transfer case out. Uh, right now, I'm going to get this secured to a pallet for loading up in the truck. Uh, then I am going to clean up this whole area and totally clean out this this uh, engine bay, scrub it, get all the dirt out of here, and then start cutting off motor mounts and uh, getting ready to get the LS fitted. My advanced adapters kit came yesterday and I was reading the instructions and in the instructions they leave the Jeep PCM in and use the uh, GM ECM to run the motor then they can keep all the stock gauges and all that and run it in tandem. Um, I am going to go a different direction. Uh, we removed the Jeep hardware. There's the two plugs that are mostly engine control. Um, back here uh, is the fuel pump transmission speedo uh, I'm going to take this out of this wire bundle and then when I put the uh, LS in I'm going to actually integrate all of this back in more factory and then the third plug right here has uh, doesn't have as much to do with engine control um, but we're going to take this apart I'll probably get into this bundle right here and um, remove all the stuff I don't need and then that way it'll look more like a factory installation. Uh, the LS, the um, all the wiring comes out on the driver's uh, fender well. After I get this in I'm going to refit the wire bundle. I haven't loomed it up yet so what I'm going to do is lay it all in here. I'm going to try to take the wires out and move the all the, the PCM or, or the ECM, I'm going to try to move it over on this side, back where the factory one was. And uh, so I'm going to rework the whole thing. When I get that done, then I'll put the wire looms and tape it up. We will go into detail on how we integrate all, it, all of the uh, wiring into the system. That will be, there's a lot of videos on what we're doing, so we're not going to spend a bunch of time on that. but. I haven't found any information in any videos on somebody actually integrating it in. Um, so we will spend some time on that. As you get into this, the advanced adapters kit, they run parallel. They run both systems. Um, that does allow you to do factory gauges except for the tachometer. Um, the GM does not talk to the Jeep um, as far as gauges, any of the gauges. So either you run them in tandem like they suggest, you can use factory gauges, have to fake the tack out a little bit, or you can do what I did and I got the autometer set of gauges. Uh, these are all standalone, so you don't need a factory PCM to use these gauges. So uh, even the speedometer will learn. You just drive it two miles and hit the button. Anyway, it'll learn your whatever your speedo puts out. So. This is a nice way to go. It's a little bit more on the pricey side, but 
this is the way we're going to go. And it looks cool too. So here's the advanced adapters radiator. It's all aluminum. Uh, it does come with the uh, automatic. Uh, you can run your automatic with this. Uh, we're running the five speed. Uh, we got a brand new shiny aluminum bell housing. It's going to bolt up to the AX15. Uh, right fresh from advanced adapters. So this is kind of cool. I can't wait to get it actually all unpackaged. There's a clutch in here. I got a high torque starter plus all the bolts and everything I'm supposed to need to bolt this thing right in. In the kit, we got new motor mounts. Uh, these weld onto the frame and these bolt onto the motor. So I got a right and a left. And so we got these in this kit also. And then in the last few days, I've been. Uh, Degreasing, cleaning up, I repainted because it looked really ugly. And so I painted this all black. Uh, I didn't paint the heads, and I'm not going to, but I did paint the valve covers. And because my Jeep is red, I painted these red, same color. And uh, that'll be a nice accent. I will paint the coil packs black so they're nice and shiny. In the next uh, few weeks, we're going to do a bunch of cleaning under the engine compartment. We're going to get this uh, looking better, ready to go in. I'll get everything bolted together. We will do some uh, video updates. Uh, it might be a couple weeks before we post up another one, but uh, right now it's just a boring cleaning that uh, we got to get taken care of. We'll see you on the next one.